What's going on YouTube? Uh, it's early Sunday morning and basically I've blocked off my entire day to just straight focus on the Mustang. Uh, my plan for the uh, day is basically to get this thing back on the ground and uh, driving uh, without any issues. I'm still going to have a couple of little details by the time that's all done, but um, let's go over the major items that I'm looking at doing today. All right, so underneath the car, um, I've already got the flywheel mounted up and cleaned. Uh, I'm gonna clean that one more time with some very strong brake cleaner. So anytime you put a flywheel on, make sure that thing is clean, 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 because um, they ship it to you. If you get a brand new one, they ship it to you in this nasty grease, and uh, you just don't want that stuff getting on your clutch because it's basically, it'll ruin it if you try to drive with it on there. Next up is gonna be the transmission, drive shaft, um, of course, the rear end, um, the shifter, I need to cut the uh, front carpets to fit around the cage, and then I need to make a couple of repairs to the uh, seat mounting location. At some point, I'm going to actually wrap these harnesses onto the bar instead of mounting them to the uh, rear seat belt bolts. Uh, what else do we have? I repaired the fender flare, and then once everything is done, I'm going to swap out the tie rod on this side. I can't do it right now because it's just too hard to turn from this angle, and I need to put a longer wrench on it. So if uh, I've already rented the tie rod tool, it was some garbage. Uh, so if anybody has any suggestions on how I can get that done, um, let me know. That's pretty much the overview for what needs to get done today. Uh, I'm not gonna be too detailed on it in this video because I'm really just gonna be focusing on working on things. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we just installed the uh, clutch pressure plate and reinstalled the flywheel. Next up is the bell housing, which already has the clutch fork in it. And uh, we're about to pop that on there. And then the transmission. Where exactly does that bolt to? Never mind. There you go. All right, we've got the whole bell housing and uh, clutch and all that stuff. Bolts it up. Now we're gonna throw the transmission in. As you can see, I've got the uh, back end kind of sealed off to keep the transmission fluid from running out, hopefully, because it's going to get messy if that happens. Um, now what we want to do is lubricate the uh, input shaft area so that doesn't get seized together. We're going to use some good old axle grease. And you don't want to overdo this step because um, you really don't want this stuff getting on your clutch. So you just put a nice thin coat on there. Make sure you get the splines and the area that goes into the pilot bearing and uh, it'll be ready to insert into the bell housing. All right, check this out, folks. There's transmission fluid everywhere. Um, bolting the transmission up is kind of a time-sensitive operation. Uh, as you can see, my uh, plugging idea failed miserably and we leaked a lot of fluid, but it should still be fine. I shouldn't have to add any fluid. Uh, what I found out is that once you get the transmission all lined up, it'll go probably in. If you get stuck an inch from uh, the bell housing, what we did is we actually pressed in the clutch and it slid right in to where it's supposed to be. So I don't know if uh, that's what's advised, but that's a little trick that I found. If you hit the clutch, once you're about an inch away, the transmission will slide into place. So now we're about to bolt everything up and then throw the drive shaft in just to make the leaking stop and uh, move on to the next step. All right, we just hit a little snag. Um, when we tried to 
bolt the transmission cross member in. It was sitting too far forwards and the bolts, uh, so the, the transmission cross member sits in the car like that and the bolts wanted to come down right here. So what you have to do in that case is actually look for these little spot welds that are in here and you grind these spot welds off and this whole tube will actually slide backwards and forwards. So you cut these four spot welds off and slide the tubes and then uh, retack weld them in place and everything should sit the way it should sit. All right, all done, almost. Uh, this is the stock cross member and this is what you're gonna end up with. So these tubes just slid that way. That way, um, the transmission cross member is just gonna sit back a little bit further. All right, we just threw the drive shaft in and it's time to put this monster in. All right, folks, we're making a whole lot of progress. The car hasn't been like this in a long time. Um, we've got the whole rear end in, the new shocks, um, brake lines are attached, so at this point what's left is the, uh, we still have to address some things with the front end. Let's take a look. Uh, this tie rod is fresh, uh, the other side still needs to get changed, we still need to bleed the brakes. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, the exhaust, the exhaust has to go back on. And uh, once all of that happens, the car will go back onto the ground and it will be a car again. All right, folks, check this out. So we were um, bleeding the brakes, which is the last thing we had to do in order to get this car sitting on the ground. Um, and we noticed that there was uh, brake fluid spraying from under the hood. And uh, this is the culprit. The, uh, the union actually split in half. I've never seen this happen. Um, it was fine when I was driving, it just seems like it split somehow. Don't know how. But uh, on that bombshell, that concludes this episode. So I'll catch you guys next time.